Cain treacherously kisses his brother and says, Come unto me. And he does, and Cain treacherously kills him. How would these words have sounded to Queen Joanna I of Naples? We can imagine her in the privacy of her candlelit bedroom, admiring the magnificent paintings that illustrate this famous Old Testament passage, perhaps thinking about loyalty and treason, or about duty and destiny. The very destiny that had made her queen at the age of 16, and forced her to fight her own husband to remain in power. It was during her reign in the mid-14th century that this Bible moralisé, commissioned by her grandfather Robert the Wise, was completed. Notice the two-tier structure of the narrative in these books, historiated versions of the Holy Scriptures. The biblical paraphrases and scenes appear in the upper band and are glossed by the miniatures and text in the lower band. A harmonious sequence of miniatures, pale blue, pale pink and crimson, stand out against the gold ground of the 144 miniatures narrating the first six books of the Old Testament and part of the Book of Judges. The innovative style of the Bible Moralisé of Naples quickly abandoned the traditional medallion in favour of other shapes, culminating in larger rectangular frames with arches subtly separating the scenes. The gradual preeminence of the images is far more obvious in the New Testament scenes some occupying the entire page, which reveal a much more delicate Giotto-style hand. 76 far more figurative paintings, depicting Christ's life and passion. What feelings do these images arouse? Their close-ups are reminiscent of Reredosis, or even the frescoes typical of the monumental Neapolitan paintings of the mid-14th century. Indeed, the Bible Moralisé of Naples reflects a crucial period in the history of Italian painting. In addition, by featuring two different artistic trends in a single volume, it is quite unique. Readers can also see the mistakes, highlighted with dots or remedied after scraping off the original ink. Tiny irregularities hidden in this text point us to its Italianized French. But the high point of this Bible are its images. It is tempting to imagine the miniaturists working with gold, silver and natural pigments in their atelier. Masterful, anonymous artists devoted to the search for perfection. This is also the philosophy that guides the work of Molero, who has devoted almost two years to the study and reproduction of the Bible Moralisé of Naples housed in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, meticulously examining every detail, folio by folio, and checking countless galley proofs until the smell, touch and appearance of the original parchment are achieved. A highly delicate artisan task in keeping with this unique personal volume. This edition of the Bible Moralisé of Naples renews the appreciation of this Bible once again. A codex that sojourned in different royal libraries and was confiscated by the armies of Napoleon, who did not hesitate to leave his courtly stamp upon the spine of this manuscript. Our 987 numbered copies, certified by Notary Public, are accompanied by an in-depth academic analysis 
which sets the manuscripts important in context and highlights its splendor. We are sure that this beautiful, far-reaching Bible moralise gave Joanna I many transcendental moments of reflection. An experience that Molero invites you to personally rediscover and enjoy. Seven centuries later, with this codex able to raise the mind into higher spheres.